the first sense that develops after conception is the vestibular sense. And this thing kind of represents the vestibular structures, okay? And Bernard Cohen at Mount Sinai said that the mechanical arrangement of the three semicircular canals greatly simplifies the brain's task of sorting out the three dimensions of space. Now, if you look at this, you see where this kind of these this couldn't get semicircular uh, <coughs> PVC pipes. <laughs> okay, <laughs> my model. So this, these are more than semicircular canals, but they'll illustrate the the piece, and that is that this plane, okay, the horizontal plane here, is and notice that the fluid in these semicircular canals tend to stay still and so there's motion which is sensed okay and so as it moves the fluid in this one moves from the inside out and this one from the outside in okay and then uh, when you move on the lateral plane and actually this is the one of the things this plane is tied into is the balance of the two brain hemispheres. You can see the so the, the 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 rocking this movement this way. Okay, now in these again, it, the the fluid is going from the inside out here and over here the outside in. But now when it moves this way, what happens? Is there a difference? Or is it moving pretty much the same direction? And so out of what happens is that you define the three dimensions of space with these three semicircular canals. The interaction of the two of them together give you a like stereophonic auditory, well, you want two earphones, okay, to get, uh, so you have a stereo, uh, a stereo uh, vestibular structure. So a three-dimensional structure. And this depends on inertia. And these, I should have these hanging down there, but I wanted to be able to spin them so you could see the, the, the okay. But now the little otolith, the little pendulum-like device that you have the, uh, Otolith, and you have in the otolith, you have the saccule and the utricle. And the utricle is a little pendulum like device, okay? And so, from a pendulum, you see, one of the things that I can do with this pendulum is I can build a clock. So, I have time. I can use it in an inertial guidance system so I can measure space. And the amplitude is a function of energy. And so from this thing, the brain develops. The, I mean, this is the first sense it's developing. It develops first. And where's the three dimensions of space? And then the, the direction. And then you get a time, space, and energy measure. So you, you have a Bureau of Standards like... Um, Aristotle said the commonality of the senses. That means that all these senses have to have a common root. And so the first sense is this. So you have time, space, and energy measure. Now as the baby moves in the womb, the movement excites the vestibular, and then the movement takes on the, this function. Okay. And then again, as the mother talks, her heart, her heart is beating, and so as the baby moves in the womb with a heartbeat, develops a sense of direction from sound. But one of the marvelous things about this is that when the baby, the mother talks or sings, the baby's movement's in train. And early the baby's free to move, okay? But basically, that is the root of language, okay? Because words go back to the commonality of the senses and they go back to the three-dimensional mouth and lip movements that generate them in the first place. And so when you're building on the building these structures, you're building a foundation for language.